Welcome to Craig Baxo. Like how long it took to get to the city and like the audition grind that I was on. Like um, I was working with an agent up there for a while um, and going to auditions and like trying the whole actor thing. Um, and it was just a lot. It was like you truly do like when it comes to like big like some of the smaller auditions were fun. Um, and like being in the city was fun at times. Um, but the bigger auditions, like the cattle calls, like really do make you feel like cattle. So <laughs> um, it was just, it, yeah, it was just kind of draining too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it definitely a fun place to visit. And I've had a lot of like really cool experiences there performing and um, competing like when I was in school um, and just like experiencing the city but not like living there like right just for like a vacation know. right so but, yeah <laughs> I understand that I uh... back from New York to Charlotte um, I lived at home again for a while for a couple of months like trying to figure just figure shit out and um, I just didn't know until I met my producer and partner who I met at a, like a random karaoke night at Petra's bar and event room, which is like a place that I know and love now and pre- have like performed at. And I met one of my best friends there who's also a local musician and she helped me write my first song. Like I didn't even know that being like until entering and like, I guess entering, not, not like I didn't even realize I was entering the scene. And then like, there I was like, I was just like, Oh, I actually like, I don't have to give up on just because like New York didn't work out and like, I'm not an actor anymore per se, like doesn't mean I have to give up on what I feel passionately about, which is singing, creating, writing. And I I don't think I knew that being a recording artist was something that I was interested in until the people in the Charlotte music scene that I still work with today helped me figure that out. That's awesome. That's really cool. (laughs) So I saw somewhere where they categorized you as an indie pop artist. Do you agree with, is that what you would say? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, I, I think it encapsulates my sound very well. Um, I joke that I'm like a pop slut. Cause I just, <laughs> I'm, such a, I'm such a slut for pop. Like I don't like, I love the candy. I love like the bright, like just bold, amplified, sugary, sweet, corny shit like Mm -hmm. but I also like as with my own music I do embrace that like side of pop but I I think I'm still indie and I don't I guess that the indie part of the label kind of leaves some more room for me to experiment you know do you ever think about like being like a country music star just from like what you were kind of brought (laughs) up on or not really obviously I don't know I'm really like thankful I have thought about, like, I've definitely thought about it before. Um, I just don't think that it's where my, my talents within writing and like style lie. If that makes sense. Like I don't, uh, it's not the genre that I excel in, but I do think that it gave me a solid, like a really cool background as a child. Um, yeah. Well, right also now. to another thing, I'm like, I'm a writer. I wouldn't say I'm a songwriter, but was wondering um, what's that process of writing a song like? Is that something that you mark off time for? Does it just kind of come to you out of nowhere? What's it like? It's kind of both. And like, to be candid with you, it's it's been really uh, difficult. It was really difficult earlier this year. Like I did take a break um, from writing from music from all of it for a while to focus on just my personal life mental health like my sobriety and like once I re-enter like I pretty recently have re-entered like working on it and like the songwriting process is something that I it can be like worked up at least in my head and I know for a lot of people like that can resonate with this like you can work it up in your head to be this like beast of a thing um and like, even if you think like, I, I consider myself like a good writer. I, but I think that I'm not a very quick writer. Um, like I'm not, it's also a muscle. I, I, I think that it's a muscle that you have to like, it is important to set aside time. There's so many people in, in Charlotte that like I admire <clears throat> for their, like other artists that I admire for their songwriting abilities. 
and how much time they set aside, like how dedicated they are. For me, it's a mix of what you, what you had asked. Like, is it, it can be something that comes to me and I will open my voice memo app immediately and start singing into it. And I have like a ton of those in there that could become something. But then I think it's also something that if I really want, like lately it's been something I have to set aside time for because I'm trying to re-enter like reconnect to this part of my brain. Mm -hmm. Um, So I guess in that way, it is kind of like a muscle that if you, if you don't work it and you don't like sit and write, even if what you're writing is like, you feel like it's trash, like just keep writing. That's the hardest part for me because that's like the best advice I've gotten, but I don't always heed it because I'm like, why would I keep writing if I already think this shit is trash? Like, (laughs) but but I get um, it, you know, but it's, it is, I guess a really, it is a really important part of the process. Um, and I guess I, I want to take more of that advice. Um, I'm trying to, uh, it's just, it is, it can be difficult. It can be tricky because I want to stay inspired, but I also know that it takes work. No. Yeah. I dig that. Or, I mean, I just, I've always had, depending on when you talk to me, my writing journey has always been very interesting, but here recently I've just been like, I connect with what you're saying where it's like, I'm just going to write and then I'll go back and edit later. Cause if I don't just put it down, then I won't end up writing. Right. Exactly. You'll just keep putting it off. We talked about like taking a break, um, connected to like mental health and sobriety. And so I know that you've like openly shared, um, on your social media about your sobriety and was curious just because I actually, um, it's interesting that I pause before I'm like, am I sober? Because I haven't drank for years, um, but have had um, a dancing relationship with marijuana. So I feel like, you know, obviously I've noticed here recently where people are like, I'm sober, but like, I don't drink, but I do X, Y, Z. So I'm not really sure where I am at on my journey, but was wondering like if you can share anything about your journey or what made you decide to become sober or... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I I mean, I appreciate you asking, um, and also sharing where you're at with it, with your, your own journey, um, with substances and just for me, um, I think the reason I'm so open about it is because when other people have been open about it on social media, it's helped me so much. And I am such a, um, advocate for destigmatizing things like this. I think that's like a really important part of me as a person and like my artistry too. And I just, I have known for a while that alcohol, uh, like dancing relationship, like you said, is, is kind of also the perfect way to describe it for me because people I think have so many connotations and like definitions in their head of what like alcoholic means and like what it means to be a problem drinker and like oh if you're not drinking every day or you're not like physically dependent on it then you're not like a problem drinker um and I I don't necessarily like fault those people for thinking that or saying that but I think that a lot of what I've learned through my sobriety and like following other sober people whether they're artists or not is just that you, when you know, you know, like to, to, to use that phrase, but like you do, it, you don't have to be anything. Like you don't have to have any sort of um, blueprint, I guess, for substance abuse or usage to like know that you have a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, like where it was for me, because like if you are someone that was a coworker or a friend of mine, it's like you maybe you wouldn't know unless you went out with me um, or you kind of knew like what alcohol just became to me and how it just like started to take, like run my life, even though I wasn't a daily drinker or, you know, someone luckily I can't, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that my body, I didn't get to the point where I was physically dependent. Um, But it, it was something that needed to happen for a while. And once I knew I just was ready to make that shift and it has been extremely difficult, but extremely rewarding and I, and beautiful. And I've met, I can't imagine my life now without the people that I've met and the things that have happened to me because of my variety. No, very cool. Thank you. Thank you for being open or just even like online, not even just, um, in the interview. Yeah. I found, like I said, with, um, me not drinking for a long time now. It is very interesting um, 
socially how like society judges you even like it's very interesting even like just a lot like I don't yeah I mean I could go I could have a whole show about all that or just like I think it actually makes people uncomfortable a little bit that I'm not partaking in drinking with yeah. them. I don't know if you experience that or you just stay away from the whole scene together altogether no I absolutely experience that and like completely understand what you're talking about it is so expected like it just is and I think even with uh, I've I've had the experience where when I tell someone that I'm sober or I'm out because I don't I at first in like my extremely early like I would still consider myself in fairly early sobriety but I would like in my extremely early sobriety I couldn't go out to places um like I couldn't go to bars it just wasn't safe um it wasn't a good idea and now that I do I, I go out like I I'm still a pretty social person I enjoy I mean me, the music scene you know I perform in bars I'm seeing shows I'm out you know at concerts whatever it is but it is what you just like what you just said it's the even people that whether or not like I'm not I'm not going to be the one to judge and say, oh, they're uncomfortable because they also have a problem, but you also never know. And I think because it's so societally expected to drink, to have a good time, to let loose, to unwind, to whatever, to celebrate that if you're not doing that, I think people project, like, I guess I'll just say that, like, it is a thing that if like I did it, I projected if somebody else wasn't drinking or like my friends that I knew that were sober then before I was, I would be like, oh shit, like, why? Like maybe I, or feel the need to be like, well, well, like, well, I don't drink all the time. Like, or I'm just a social drinker. Like people will over explain or overcompensate. And I don't know, it's awkward. And I know that a lot of times it's well-meaning from like people oh, that, yeah. you know, but, but yeah, it's, it's completely, I understand that feeling. <laughs> like it happens every single day. Yeah. It's like, well, but I guess too, it's almost like the same example of like, it's almost like food. It's like someone like you're out somewhere and they're like, you're not going to eat with us. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not. <laughs>